What's going on guys? So let's talk about the developmental progression that we see in the Wing Chun forms, particularly the empty hand forms. Uh, it, not that the dummy and the weapons aren't important, they are. In fact, I would say the dummy is probably the most important form because of how it, uh, it just puts everything together. And if you needed to get somebody really good, really fast, and like say boot camp, right? And you, you absolutely had to do Wing Chun to get them there, like the dummy, Shi Sao, and lots of sparring, right? Um, because you can you can kind of 80 20 the system with the dummy that's why I think it's that important but we're not gonna talk about that one right now uh, and then the weapons they're kind of in their own category uh, whole lots to say there we're not even gonna get into it but the three empty hand forms the classic three forms that we have so I'm Tao Chum Q and Bu G they have a pretty distinct progression uh, as far as what they're trying to teach you and and how it kind of builds the Wing Chun machine um, and I would argue you are not you know even competent in Wing Chun until you have been through all of them um, and I understand Buji is a little bit of a special case but even so like I would still say you are a beginner until you own it like within yourself all of the forms um, and a lot of that is because it's kind of like trying to drive a car that hasn't been completely built yet if you don't understand them because keep in mind our forms are our textbook our forms are not uh, shadow boxing they're not supposed to be uh, performance forms they are literally textbook forms giving you principles and concepts uh, express through movement that you can kind of drill in and, and build over time. Um, so let's kind of start with what each of them is kind of going through and then we'll dig into a couple of things. We'll try to keep this short. So first off, sorry about turning my back to you. First off we have Silum Tau. All right. I know, I know. Proper Cantonese translation, that should be an N, not an L. Our lineage just happens to tend to use the L and I got stuck with it and now it doesn't look right in my brain if I don't see the L. Um, so when we look at Silum Tao, yeah, we can talk about our center line and posture and the introduction of your techniques and your stance uh, and all of that. Yeah, and, and I get that. But the overall theme of Silum Tau, what is it driving into you? Other than center line, because yes, center line, right? It, it's structure, right? It is body structure. You know, and because it's not a moving form, we can talk a lot about Silum Tau uh, being kind of the, the upper body centric portion and uh, when we move our techniques one of the things at least within our lineage what we talk about a lot of is moving things from the elbow and there's a whole whole you know lecture on on using your elbows that, that we can get into and we're not going to here but we're just gonna kind of put an asterisk here and you know as our focus point We're just gonna write down elbow, right? Just use that as a mental cue, right? That you should be kind of driving your hand techniques from behind your elbow. And again, we can get into the details on that later, just not today. So, by and large, right? The, the three sections of Sil and Tao, what are we looking at, right? You, you've got your, your section at the front, which is obviously dealing with, uh, you know, center line and building your stance. Um, to some degree it is similar to a Qigong type exercise um, in, in some small way it's, it's even conditioning um, although you know my stance on conditioning it's kind of a, a useless catch-all term that doesn't mean a whole lot without contextual qualifiers um, 
And then you know the, the, the second section, it's not just waving your hands around, right? You're actually looking at how to transfer from body structure to body structure. So there's some movement in there, of course, but by and large, you're still focusing on where are your key points of body structure in the, the beginning and end points between movements. And that's pretty important. And then the third section where you're stringing together defense and offense together, even there, you're looking at kind of body structure and to some degree range of motion, um, you know, as you go through these things. So Silentau by and far is a form that is building your, your uh, awareness and, and, and some conditioning of your body structure. And we put a lot of emphasis on driving things from the elbow. So then we get into Chum Q, right? And I'm gonna be using the proper, you know, uh, Yale romanization. Uh, Yuk Ping is good too, but it, it looks a little more Eastern European. It doesn't look as easy to understand uh, for English speakers. So Yale is a, a good translation standard. Uh, so, Chum Q. It's an A, not a U, just so you know. Um, so Chum Q, obviously, right, it's movement. And it's particularly, right, the big thing is Yuma, right, which we talk about in Cantonese, right, using the waist uh, to actually drive everything. It's kind of putting the engine in the car. It's right, if this is building the frame, this is, this is putting the engine in the car. Um, so, you know, Chum Q, we're just gonna, we're gonna say uh, movement and, and, and power, but we're gonna kind of put an asterisk next to power. Right, because we're gonna get to more power in BG, but movement is inherently adding power, right? It's your main driver. Right, you, if you don't put your mass, which is essentially what Yuma is doing, right? If you don't put your mass into your techniques, you're going to be all kind of disjointed and, and bleeding off power that you could otherwise have. So, having the body structure is good, but then having your movement where your structure is linked and you're moving all of your mass into it, huge, huge, huge for power, right? And our little asterisk point here, not to confuse you with another asterisk. You're all watching the same video, so you know what I'm talking about here. You can use your own notations if you like, right? Our key point here is driving from the hips. I know, you means waist, not hips, but like when the Chinese say waist, they mean kind of like from your diaphragm to your taint. It's a massive section of your middle. Um, so we're just going to say hips, right? Hip drive. And then... We're gonna get into Buji, right? Again, Yale Romanization, right? I'm not even gonna put this here. Just to satisfy you, right? This is your proper Romanization for the forms. Don't go and fight people over this, right? It, this is, it, it's just having a standard so we can translate things with ease and not have to go with, this guy spells it this way and that guy spells it that way. Let's just use the, like the university standards and leave the individual translations for the people who want to communicate in private languages. Um, so BUG is a really, really important form. Does, there are some people out there, and I'm not going to point fingers, but there are some people out there that believe that you can be just perfectly fine with Wing Chun at Chum Q. You don't need anything else after that. And I'm going to go ahead and disagree with that because VG, even though you can put the concepts of VG back in Chum Q and Silum Tao, VG is the point where we're focusing on it. VG is, the way my Sifu put it, is you're putting the power at the end of the weapon, which in a sense is kind of like saying it's the, 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 the snap, crack, whatever at the end of a whip, right? So I'm going to put this in quotes. And we see that at the wrist and finger movements at the beginning, 
all the way through the two en two way energy movements in the in the elbows, even the snapping movements that we throw in uh, in the rest of the form. It's all you're, you're putting that that whip crack on the end of it. Okay, and. Again, Buji is not necessarily adding anything specific. I mean, there's a couple of kind of, kind of, sort of, you know, new techniques or new expressions in the form, but, but not really, because they essentially already existed in the other forms. All we're doing is we're putting a focus on it. And the way that I want you to think about Buji, right? is it's a, if, we're, if we're talking about like building the car and putting the engine in, BUG is kind of like supercharging it, right? It, it's putting on your, your aftermarket add-ons and stuff. And, and to that degree, yeah, maybe you've got a, a, a functional little something, but you don't have a good performing machine until you kind of gone through and tweaked some things, right? So we're gonna, Put this one down here and again like I said Buji's a little different right but it's you know you're just your supercharger and a lot of the techniques really kind of don't work very well until you start really adding in a lot of these Buji concepts simply for the fact that most people you fight don't move like Wing Chun people. And while you could get away with just Chum Q level stuff against other Wing Chun people, if somebody starts boxing you, doing Muay Thai, you know, fighting you like an MMA fighter, or even just a street brawler, having some of this extra supercharge on there will make things feel a lot more effortless. And, you know, it, it just, things move smoother, they flow better. So this is why I argue you're really still a beginner until you've got all of this stuff down, okay? And so when we get into this, what we're kind of seeing then is kind of how we're stacking the body, right? And we're, 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 we're building our vehicle, right? You have to, you have to have a framework for whatever it is you're building and there's our framework and then you have to put the moving parts in there well there's our moving parts and then you have to tweak things until it performs the way you want it there's bug and that's kind of how that developmental progression works so get a good shot of that and then we're going to move on to the next piece Okay, so now let's dig into the forms themselves a little bit because even within that three-tier progression that we see there, there's still kind of further progression to be had, okay? And it's pretty interesting, okay? So for Silum Tao, yes, Silum Tao, one-handed techniques, right? You, you can look at, uh, at Ip Ching's uh, explanation that, on that on uh, Sigun Kwok's website. Um, so I'm going to shorthand this. So Silum Tao, right, center line, one-handed techniques, body posture, right, we talked about all that, but the form can be kind of neatly broken into three sections, right? So you have your A, your B, your C. Right, so absolutely A is all body structure and, uh, you know, posture, elbow energy, all of that kind of stuff. We're just gonna write structure because you get it. Now B, when we get to the two hand section, what are we really learning, right? Are you learning how to do a few hand techniques? Yes, yes, yes. But what are you really learning? You are learning how to change direction without coming to some artificial set point or neutral point, okay? 
changing direction is absolutely huge because if one, if you're fighting in close range, which Wing Chun purports to do, but two, right, you're at the very beginning of your journey. If your back is up against a wall and somebody else is besting you, you need to have as much efficiency and for lack of a better term, speed as possible, which means kind of cutting down on arbitrary uh, middle points that don't do you any good. So you're learning how to just move from position to position without returning to a neutral point first. And then lastly, right, then you learn how to kind of string defense and offense together. Defense and offense are kind of misnomers, and again, that's like a whole separate video, so let's not get into that. Um, but you're clearly seeing, you know, Pac and then strike. You're seeing Tan, Gan, Tan, strike, right? You, you get what I'm saying, right? You're, you may have to defend or control the line a few times before you can actually return fire. Um, but more importantly, what you're really showing is how to start stringing these things together. And because Silim Tao is kind of a one-handed form, what you're really looking at is kind of maximizing the intelligence in each hand unilaterally, so that when you get to the two-hand stuff later on, you've, you're not so lost, right? Because coordinating both hands at the same time can be a little bit challenging for beginners. Um, so we're just gonna write down combos because you're watching the same video, you get it. Yeah, I'll put it in parentheses. Defense and offense. Okay, so then what about Chum Q? Well, Chum Q's kinda got its own progression too, right? So from here, Chum Q can also be neatly broken into three parts. So we have the turning section and then we have both stepping sections. Now the two stepping sections, different people are going to disagree on. I'm just going to give you what was taught to me. Please don't sit there and argue about terminology. This is dumb. Uh, all right, so turning and weight shifting because they go hand in hand. Right, so we just spent an entire form, we just spent an entire form standing still, right, with our back against a wall. Well, turning or shifting kind of starts getting you a little bit off the wall. It gets you being able to evade using body movement, not just wedging things off, you know, parrying and whatnot with your hands. Um, never mind, it starts getting you in the habit of moving your weight around which becomes very, very important to everything else, especially your power generation, uh, but, but even your, your defensive and control maneuvers. And then from there, we move into Buma, right? Which I'm gonna undercut this, oversimplify it. I'm gonna call it kind of attack footwork, but please keep in mind that it's not purely offensive footwork. It, I'm just simplifying terms. So, uh, bu ma or bu bo, you know, ma is horse, which is shorthand for stance, or bo, which means to step. Um, that becomes very important. And in the progression of things, right, your back's against a wall, you're starting to evade things on the wall. This attack step kind of gets you off the wall. Now, let me stop here for a second. I am not actually saying that Silum Tao is teaching you how to fight with your back against a wall. That is not what it's doing. It's a useful illustration, so you kind of see what I'm talking about. Thanks. All right, so this attack step is kind of getting you off the wall. It's getting you into the fight. You are no longer being just defensive or countering. You are actually pushing the fight. And it is important that this step comes before the next one because it is simpler to just move forward and attack, kind of bury your chin and go, than it is to start controlling the fight. Which, third section, at least in some lineages, especially in mine, we refer to the third section as...
camera died. Sorry, I had to change to my phone. Sorry, audio quality, video quality, everything terrible. I know, but I want to finish this. So, clear progression, right? We get to VUG. VUG is the supercharger. It's adding things on top of what's already there. There's not really much to add here except for just developing your flow, your timing, right, your, your spatial positioning, all of that kind of stuff, and really, really kind of turning it into an actual fight game, right? Being able to actually fight with it and not just do forms, right? And unfortunately, VG doesn't have this kind of uh, three-point thing. It's, a, it's more of a collection of, of concepts. I mean, the first half of the form, literally the first half of the form, uh, the, the repeating elbows, uh, that's not, like, that, that's half the form. Is that one section? Is that four sections? Is that one section with four parts? Right? It depends on how you want to divide it. And then, right, the Gansau, Musau, uh, uh, Foxau, Lopsau, and, and, and the Wu Tao section, right? There's a few more right there. It, it doesn't easily divide into a three section form. But each of those positions is giving you something that is really, really, really crucial. And this comes into that, that old uh, maxim of VUG uh, contains emergency techniques. Eh, that's a poor way to phrase it. What is VUG really trying to teach you? All right, so. is teaching you how to capture the center line. Whether you didn't have it in the first place or you lost it, Vuji is giving you tools to capture or recapture the center line, you know, defensively and offensively. Now, the, the overall concept of Vuji is much, much deeper than that, right? Again, we talked about, you know, putting that, that, that last second uh, whip snap on there, you know, uh, for you Tai Chi folk, uh, the, the, the Fa Jing kind of idea. Um, you also have uh, the two-way energy, big time, two-way energy, throwing, you know, the, the, the push and pull in there, the ups and downs in there, all of that. You're developing kind of this both sides of your body working at the same time, and that's really, really important as well. But mostly what you're seeing in VG is this concept of capturing or recapturing the center line, returning to center. Maybe uh, we can also put in return. They have the rest of their lives to work on everything anyway. They're going to get, you know, better over time anyway. So why not go ahead and kind of Go through the textbook with them, and maybe at a more rudimentary level at first, and slowly flesh out the details. You don't have to go through every detail all at once by any means. But if we want Wing Chun to grow, if we want Wing Chun to reclaim a position of respect in the martial arts community, we can't rely on Ip Man movies and the rather pitiful legacy, uh, Wing Chun legacy uh, of Bruce Lee. Uh, we have to step into our own, we have to step out of the shadow of the tradition, and we need to look at what it's trying to build and how we can build the machine so that it is useful and functional within the ever-changing combat environment. And that means treating it as a system of principles, not a traditional system of techniques. And I know that people give lip service to that all the time. I am by no means the only person saying that at all. And there are some really, really good Wing Chun people out there that could probably eat my lunch any given day, even if they're sick. And I'm fine with that. But for the rest of you, stop bickering about 
you know, terminology in this specific technique, that specific technique, it is a system of principles and concepts and you're building a functional machine to be used. So let's start treating it that way and actually build our students in a progressive manner that allows them to actually be functioning fighters and not just jazz hands. All right, I'm gonna leave you with that because I am done rambling and I've already had too many camera problems. So <laughs> I will see you next time. I know it's been a while. Sorry, this is much longer than I thought it would be. But uh, yeah, good journey.